So welcome everybody to episode 15 of Driver Suit Blog Radio. As always, I am your host, David G. Firestone. And today we're going to be talking about the NASCAR Hall of Fame and the SFI Foundation. So without further ado, let's get to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Now, for reasons that are obvious to everybody, the NASCAR Hall of Fame hasn't had ceremonies or had a vote for a while, but they're going to be doing that on May 4th, I believe. And I figured we should look over the, um, we should look over the, uh, grouping of people and see who is on the list. So let's get started. First off, we're going to start with the modern era ballot. Um, and all of this information is from Jayski, by the way. Uh, first off, we've got Neil Bonnet, who has 18 Cup Series wins, including the uh, 81 82 Coca Cola 600. Tim Brewer, who was a two time NASCAR Cup Series champion crew chief with Cale Yarborough in 1978 and Darrell Waltrip in 1981. Uh, Jeff Burton, who won 21 times in the Cup Series, including the Southern 500 and two Coca Cola 600s. Carl Edwards, 2007 Xfinity Series champion and 28 Cup Series wins. Harry Gant, 18 Cup Series race wins, two Southern 500 victories, and is part of one of the best. Rookie Seasons of All Time, 1979. Harry Hyde, 1970 NASCAR Cup Series Championship Crew Chief and Crew Chief to um, Tim Richman, which was um, portrayed in Days of Thunder. Uh, Matt Kenseth, 2003 NASCAR Cup Series Champion and winner of 39 Cup races, including the Daytona 500. Uh, Larry Phillips, the first five-time NASCAR Weekly Series National Champion. Ricky Rudd, who won 23 times in the NASCAR Cup Series, including the 1997 Brickyard 400. And Kirk Shelmerdine, who was a four-time NASCAR Cup Series crew chief with Dale Earnhardt Sr. and had his own racing career, which didn't go as well. Now we're going to move on to the Pioneer ballot. Uh, There's going to be two from the Modern Era, one from the Pioneer, and one from the Landmark so for the uh, Pioneer ballot, we have Sam Ard, who was a NASCAR Xfinity Series Pioneer and two-time champion. A.J. Foyt, who won seven Cup Series races, including the 1972 Daytona 500. Edwin Keith Banjo Matthews, who was a car builder, and he built cars that won more than 250 NASCAR Cup Series races and three championships. Herschel McGriff, who was the 1986 NASCAR West Series champion. And car owner Ralph Moody, who was a two-time Cup Series champion as an owner and is the mechanical genius of Holden Moody. Now we're going to move on to the Landmark Award. The uh, choices are Janet Guthrie, the first female to compete in a NASCAR Cup Series Super Speedway race. Alvin Hawkins, a NASCAR first flagman, and he established NASCAR racing at Bowman Gray Stadium with Bill France Sr. Current NASCAR president Mike Helton, who was also a track operator role at Atlanta and Talladega. Lisa France Kennedy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who was the NASCAR... I don't know if she was or is, but the uh, most influential women in um, motorsports. And Dr. Joseph Matoli, founder of Pocono Raceway. Now, who do I think is going to win here? Let's go with the modern era first. We'll do, I think Carl Edwards is definitely going to win, and I think Neil Bonnet's going to win. The Pioneer ballot, you'd be, um, you you got to go Ralph Moody, because he's one of the more respected owners and mechanics in the history of the sport. And the landmark award, you got Janet Guthrie. Now, who I want to win, my picks are Neil Bonnet and Harry Yant from the modern era ballot, A.J. Foyt from the Pioneer Ballot and Landmark Award, Janet Guthrie. So we're going to have to wait until May to see how this all plays out, but I'll be interested to see how it all plays out. Yeah, so with that out of the way, I'm going to take a quick break, get something to drink. My throat is sore and my mouth is very dry. And then we'll come back, we'll talk to S- talk about SFI. So let's get, so let's go to break.
And we're back. We've talked about the various aspects of fire suits on the show, but the most important aspect of it is how much it can protect you from fire. So in order to talk about how that, we have to talk about the various safety certifications. Now there's typically two that are used. Uh, there's SFI, which is used in North America, and FIA, which is used more internationally. Today we're going to be talking about SFI. So what is SFI? The SFI Foundation is a nonprofit group that administers standards for specialty automotive and racing equipment. According to their website, SFI was founded in 1963 as part of Speed Equipment Manufacturers Association, or SEMA, as their safety group. Back then, the safety culture wasn't as rigorous as it is today, and there were not many standards in place. SEMA started the safety certification with SFI, or SEMA Foundation Incorporated Certification. If equipment doesn't meet SFI standards, the participant can be denied entrance to the event. Eventually, SFI left SEMA and became its own independent group. Now let's talk about a few of the technical bulletins they've issued in regards to auto racing uniforms. 3.2 is specifically a technical bulletin on fire protection material, while 3.2a is very prescriptive in the requirements to meet ratings, such as S 3.2a slash 1, 3.2a slash 3, 3.2a slash 5, having to do with TPP or thermal protective performance, or in layman's terms, how long until you receive a second degree burn. It has to be noted that these are all guidelines and not guarantees. And I also sh should say that higher rated suits, specifically 10, 15, and 20 ratings for driver suits, currently require recertification after five years. What I've noticed also is that the rating goes higher than 20, even though 20 is the um, highest that most manufacturers make suits for. The, high, the rating goes up to 25 and even 30, but I have found no evidence whatsoever of any suit that is made or has ever been made that conforms to these standards. Now let's talk about Safety Bulletin 3.3. 3.3 deals with accessories such as arm restraints, footwear, gloves, helmet supports, and underclothing, amongst other things. At the time of this recording, the SFI standards for fire suits have not been updated since 2020, whereas driver accessory standards were updated on April 1st of this year. SFI approved items must carry a tag affixed in a very visible location usually on the sleeve, whether it be inside the wrist or on the shoulder, or even on the back of the neck. This tag, which I will show a picture of now, will not only show the SFI's logo, but will indicate the specification that it meets. It also should be noted that, um, that although Nomex is the uh, standard fire suit material, some manufacturers will use different materials to achieve the same ratings. Wearers should always follow the manufacturer's cleaning instructions to the letter as you can easily alter the properties of your gear's material and have disastrous results if the time came to rely on it. This is something not to take lightly. The, um, the washing instructions are there for a reason. Follow them. Now, it should also be noted that all racing sanctioning bodies will specify in their rules the minimum requirement to compete at various levels. For example, uh, NASCAR requires that drivers in the Cup and Xfinity Series and the Truck Series have a SFI 3.2A slash 5 rating, which means it will protect the wearer from second degree burn for 10 seconds. Pro stock in the NHRA goes for 15, which means it will protect the wearer from second degree burn for 30 seconds. And the highest that most suit manufacturers go is 20, which is in the um, top, which is mainly used in top fuel, top fuel funny car, top alcohol dragster, top alcohol funny car, and I also believe Pro Mod, though I may be wrong on that, in drag racing. And this will protect the wearer for up to 45 seconds. It should be noted that the higher rating, the higher rated suits are for drag racing, where they the drivers are not in their suits for several hours, but for 10 to 15 minutes at one time. 
It should also be noted that if you go to the SFI Foundation's website, uh, there are oftentimes incidents where suits companies that are not approved by SFI are quote unquote branding their suits with fake safety weightings. You need to always be cautious about this. SFI has on their website a list of every single approved manufacturer to that sells SFI branded clothing. So if you want to always double check before you buy, your life will depend on it. Well, that about does it for this week. I'm Dave Firestone. I'm not 100% sure. I'm working on like three or four things right now. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do for next week. But until then, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.